Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. Hope you are having a fantastic hump day. This is the Wednesday edition of EP Live, and thank you all for joining us. We are going to get started with your rundown, and I've got a couple of dedications to go through here. Mr. Chance wrote, to keep up the amazing content, Victor. Thank you so much, Mr. Chance. And Jerry Campbell Greer, who always has really nice things to say about our work, you also get a dedication as well. And finally, Anvi. Coates, the Oscar-winning editor of classic films like Lawrence of Arabia, The Elephant Man, and Out of Sight. You have to see Out of Sight. Such a great classic film. Uh, has died at the age of 92, um, and so we're dedicating this to her. And uh, let's get started with your rundown. Valve and Steam are making mobile gaming a lot better. A new iOS and Android app is on the way called Steam Link, which, which will allow players to use and play any Steam game on their smartphones. You won't be able to leave the house, unfortunately. Your phone will still need to, be, need to be connected to a host PC on the same local network, so you won't be able to go too far away, but this does give you the freedom to keep gaming while you're in other rooms. Steam Link will support MiFi controllers or MFi controllers, including the Steam controller, Valve is also working on a second app called uh, Steam Video, which will allow you to watch movies and TV shows that you've purchased. Both apps launch in the coming weeks. I was thinking about this the other day. Now, I know that this wouldn't be uh, great news for Apple or um, Andrew, you know, Google uh, if there was like a Steam dedicated section or a Steam app that lets you just download your PC games on a phone, but you can feel like we're starting to move in that direction, you know, that portability of the content that you get. I mean, we, we can do that with books and movies and music and stuff, so why can't we do that with video games? All of these invisible barriers that, you know, keep us from being able to play our games anywhere that we want to, I think they're gonna be slowly but surely dismantled. We're seeing things like, you know, Fortnite and PUBG being almost the exact same experience on a mobile game or as a mobile game on a mobile phone right now and i think we're going to see a lot of that start to happen in the next five to ten years but of course all the gatekeepers and everybody that's sort of blocking all of that stuff from happening right now all have to work together and get along and it's a very big idyllic dream right now very utopian all right, let's get moving into some uh, movie news here. The next movie from Get Out's Jordan Peele has been revealed. The filmmaker has announced that his next movie is called Us, and it's due to hit theaters in March 2019. Like Get Out, Peele is serving as both writer and director. This guy is a genius, and the log line describes it as a new nightmare. So expect chilling horror alongside cutting social commentary. Variety reports that the film will star Black Panther's Lupita, uh, Lupita Nyong'o and Winston Duke, along with The Handmaid's Tale star... Elizabeth Moss. This will be Peel's first film made under a lucrative first look deal that he inked with Universal Pictures after the blockbuster success of Get Out, which made a fortune for the studio and earned Peel an Academy Award, a well-earned Academy Award. Uh, this guy is incredible, and I feel like it, Get Out was such a, uh, a home run for him and for the studio that there is, you know, going to be a lot of expectation and a lot of pressure, I think, put on Peel to kind of always come forward with some kind of social commentary and, and uh, be a little bit smarter than just a genre picture. Uh, but he's got it in him. The guy is incredible. He's a comedic genius, and, and uh, clearly the guy knows how to put together a fantastic story that resonates. Can't wait for us. Now, it doesn't sound like EA is going to be letting up on loot boxes anytime soon. In their latest call with investors, EA CEO Andrew Wilson insists that loot boxes and games like Battlefront 2 and FIFA do not count as gambling. As other publisher, uh, publishers have argued, he says loot boxes don't meet the legal definition of gambling because you can't cash out your winnings and exchange them for real-life money. Not everyone agrees. Several governments, like in Belgium and the U.S. state of Hawaii, are in the process of banning loot boxes, or at least preventing games with them from being marketed to children, which could prevent EA from using them regardless of what Andrew Wilson thinks. This issue isn't going away anytime soon. For those of you still playing Battlefront 2, EA is launching a new season of the game dedicated to Han Solo just in time for the new movie Solo A Star Wars Story. It includes new events, modes, and a new multiplayer map based on Jabba's Palace. That begins rolling out May 15th. Now, wouldn't it be great if we did uh, some awesome Star Wars Battlefront news without tying it to a story on loot boxes? I would love 
for us to move beyond that with that great game that so many incredibly talented people have uh, poured their their hearts and souls into. But that's exactly why Andrew Wilson and his executive team has got to start pulling back. They, they shouldn't fall on their swords for loot boxes. They need to kind of distance themselves even from the stench of it, you know, even from the implied kind of aspects around loot boxes. They are not consumer friendly and consumers are not happy about it. And consumers have some protections and they have some, you know, recourse now to kind of, uh, you know, rattle their sabers and shake, you know, their signs and their, uh, and their wallets uh, away from companies like Electronic Arts if they don't make them happy. And I, I, I understand that this is, you know, huge billions of dollars in losses, but I think the long-term effects could be really massive if these guys keep sort of thumping their chests and saying, no, the loot boxes are important for the health of the business. They may have been. There might have been some great uh, things that occurred through the use of loot boxes, and I would argue that even the idea of collecting cards in sports games really ties into the idea of, of going to the corner store and buying bubblegum packs with cards in them. I see... You know, uh, that makes sense to me, but perhaps we have crested on how many billions of dollars can be made off of things that could be deemed to be gambling. You know, I think if there are governments involved saying, look, we got to, you know, we got to protect the way that consumers engage with this material and so many people are up in arms about it. Probably a good move for publishers to think twice about these kinds of things and definitely not, you know, stand up on a soapbox and and go pro loot box. That's just me though. All right, now uh, let's move on. Um, we've got uh, EA also stirring up big trouble for another big gaming company. In that same call with investors, CEO Andrew Wilson revealed that they estimate Microsoft has only sold 30 million Xbox One uh, consoles since it was launched in 2013. That is less than half of the 73 million PS4s sold by Sony. Uh, that was that estimate, I think, was at the end of 2017, so they're, they're probably closer to 80 million by this point. Microsoft themselves haven't released uh, official sales figures for the Xbox One, but EA would obviously have inside information given that they make games for both systems. If these numbers are accurate, it means that EA and other third-party developers will likely be more interested in the PlayStation going forward, but that doesn't mean anyone is giving up on the Xbox. Microsoft just revealed plans to build a new AAA development studio and increase the number of exclusives coming to the platform. Listen, this is not a surprising piece of information here. The PlayStation 4 has been crushing the uh, the competition rate right since it was launched, and Sony did all kinds of really smart things to get people hyped on the PS4. There are lots and lots of happy PS4 gamers out there, and it's all around the software. Pricing was good, hardware was good, all of that, but it's about the software, and that's exactly what I and Millions of people around the world have been telling Microsoft how they should run their company by investing lots of money into their software. And I think what's happened is they, they had this whole Kinect debacle that they kind of had to write off and write down. And now they can sort of say, that's behind us. Let's move. We have to uh, uh, not only salvage this machine, but sort of prepare for the future of Microsoft as a really big games purveyor. And that, the only way they're going to be able to do that, they got to they got to shell out some of that uh, dinero. And they're going to do it. And we're going to see something really exciting at E3. Mark my words. It's going to be cool. Uh, here's some other game news. Some disconcerting news for a lot of publishers that had some secrets uh, sort of planned for E3. It looks like Microsoft and other big publishers will be announced, uh, announcing more than a few big games at E3 this year. Walmart Canada's website has posted listings for several unannounced games, including Gears of War 5, so that's going to be fun to play that this year. For the Xbox One, a new Splinter Cell game from Ubisoft. I'm looking forward to that. I can't wait till you announce it, Ubisoft. Rage 2 from id Software and Bethesda. Now that, now that is a big surprise. Rage 1 is kind of a buried treasure. I really enjoyed that game, but it was uh, not all that it was cracked up to be. Not all that we, we hoped for. Um, we've also got the long-awaited Borderlands 3 from Gearbox. Johnny and I are going to be talking about that a little bit later in the show. And Just Cause 4 from developer Avalanche Studios, which is also another shock. Walmart has since taken down the listings, indicating that they were posted prematurely. 
So don't be surprised if all of these games get an official unveiling at E3 next month. The event kicks off June 12th, and um, the event kind of kicked off yesterday for us with EP Live, but uh, I think almost every day from here on out, we are going to be sort of in E3 mode. Next week, I'm going to be checking out some uh, uh, early code. I don't think I can say anything more than that, but I'm going to get a, a, an early look at some games that are coming. Um, and of course, today, I'm going to be joined by Jose Sanchez live. He's going to talk to talk to us about some of his predictions and hope, hopes for the big show this year. And then later in the show, we've put together a nice big video for you uh, with Johnny and I talking about our predictions for E3 2018. That's Johnny from Happy Console Gamer. 